Good evening everybody, this is Nao Carrojo and these are the 10 things you need to learn to become an effective lighting designer. Okay, so trying to become an effective lighting designer, here are the 10 things you need to learn to become one. One is to appreciate light. Two is to learn the standards. Three is to learn the software. Four is to learn the basic electrical engineering. Five, learn basic architecture. Six, learn basic psychology. Seven, learn basic physics. Eight, learn sustainability. Nine, learn how to collaborate. And of course, the last one is learn how to explain your design. So let's go and discuss it one by one. Okay, number one is to appreciate light. Nothing can beat the person in terms of lighting design who knows how to appreciate light both artificial and natural or daylight. If you know how to appreciate light, how it works, what is the effect, how to play with it, then you are guaranteed to become an effective lighting designer. And if you don't appreciate it yet, try the following activities to improve it. Uh, one is to look at your surroundings. Uh, look for both light and shadow and see how the light affects the rooms or the area and Imagine how you will improve it or see what is wrong with it or what is good about it Number two is to criticize the existing luminaires. So for example, you are sitting in a restaurant or in in your office Try and look the light fittings that they used in that area or in that room how they mount it or is it in the ceiling or at the floor or look at the effect or is it a spotlight or wall washing just try to know what kind of luminaire they used in that room three or letter c is figure out which lamp they use so if you are sitting somewhere or yeah same similar to what i example before if you are in the office or in the restaurant check what uh, luminaire or what lamp they use in that luminaire is it LED or compact fluorescent or metal halide or sodium lamp? Just figure it out or just guess. And then later on, you will be curious what are the differences of these fittings and how they look like or what is the effect of this light in the surroundings. Next is learn the standards. Of course, you need to learn the standards because all your lighting designs will be judged according to the standards because you need to follow the standards. And you can learn the standards by reading books, reading lighting design manuals, uh, read lighting handbooks, attend seminars, join blogs and forums, and follow famous lighting designers. I also do that and I have so many to mention but I love to follow famous lighting designers. I also love to read books, so I keep myself updated with the manuals or books. For example, IS na 10 or the CBC Guide version 2018, then I have to make sure that I get updated once it, has, it is released. So yeah, just look for that and check other published brochures or manuals by other uh, Latin manufacturers because they have their updated uh, brochures always. Next is to learn the software. Of course, you cannot be an effective lighting designer if you don't know how to use the software. And uh, you can have this one, two, three, four, five. At least you will have one software used for each category. For example, in the lighting des design software, at least you know Dialux or Dialux Evo or Relux or AGI32 or Lighting Reality if you can. Or if you, if you learn two or three of this, then you are good. And then you should learn a uh, basic drawing software like AutoCAD or if you know Revit or SOLIDWORKS then it's much better because it's important that you know how to use AutoCAD also. And then some editing software like Photoshop, PaintShop Pro, Picasa or Lightroom because you need to edit some of your images later on not just relying on the ray trace images on or rendered images by your software. And then uh, at least uh, 3D modeling software like, Sketch like SketchUp, 3D Max, or Pecan Planner because you really need to create some objects which sometimes very limited to do in uh, Dialux or AGI. And it's much easier if you can just import it from this 3D modeling software. And then 
you should know of course the basic software from microsoft like the word excel and powerpoint especially the powerpoint because you will do your presentation usually and the powerpoint and you will do your boq and specification using excel file and of course your report and submittals in using a word file so you should know this three basic software from microsoft so the next one is to learn the basic electrical engineering so because lighting is part mostly of electrical engineering subjects or electrical engineering uh, profession then you at least need to know the basics of this um, profession like for example you at least need to know what is lamp ballast luminaire wiring controls or the basic terms like lux luminance luminance or lumen per watt or efficiency and you know how to read the lighting layout or electrical layout in AutoCAD or in drawing, like what I am showing as an example right now. So you need to at least know the basic of this electrical engineering, especially for uh, a luminaire. What is the difference between a luminaire and a lamp? So a luminaire is composed of lamp, ballast, fitting diffuser reflector and other stuff inside because luminaire is a whole fitting it's a complete fitting and then next is um, learn the basic architecture because it is crucial because this is all where it comes from artificial and dilating are all connected to structure or architecture so being a lighting designer you need to understand architecture and design so here are some basic information you need to learn one is understanding the drawings some of these are the floor plans reflected ceiling plans elevations and sections and no lighting designers can move forward or can understand anything if they don't understand the drawing so therefore understanding the basic architecture or these basic drawings is a must for a lighting designer i have one example like how can you identify which one is the wall which one is the window uh, which one is for example the table or which one is a ceiling if you saw a hidden line what is that so every line in the drawing has meaning so you should understand what are those and then number two is understand the word concept because this is is usually used by architect or designer so if the architect says ah, this is my concept or the, architect, the designer said ah this is our concept so what is concept for them so they will explain this blah 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 so you will get used to the word concept so you must understand what are their concepts because this is where the basic of uh, the root of their design so you must integrate your lighting design into their concept and then of course detailed drawing if you have some section drawings or cove lighting drawings you should understand how it looks like in actual or how do you fit in your luminaires in that detailed drawings uh, letter e is the character of the building for example it is a mosque or a church how do you play your light on this kind of structure because you cannot use a color changing rgb led on a mosque or in a church because it it's not fit to that one unless the priest or the imam said that i want it to become like color changing but usually it's not and for example it's an office building or a technological building then your color must blend to that kind of character and of course if it is a house then usually it is warm color to make it more warm and more relaxing for the people all right so you should know the character of the building and then letter f is the basic terms which is for example when the architect or the designer said okay i think i should give you the rcp so what do you mean by rcp you will get oh my god what is rcp so better find out what is the meaning of the rcp what is that word layout what is the perspective views because i know some people who doesn't know the word perspective views they think it's perspective but it's perspective <laughs> so you should know those basic terms all right next is learn the basic psychology because finding the effect of light to human mind and body will therefore involve psychology so understanding emotion and feelings through light will improve your lighting design decisions that is why the lighting design for office is different from the lighting design of a restaurant so these are the basic psychology 
So here are some topics of lighting which involve psychology. One is the color effect to human, B light effect to human, character of light, threshold of pain, and glare and discomfort. All of this involved with the psychology of human being. So you should know how, uh, at least you know the basics of psychology which affects light or light affects human. Number seven is to learn the basic physics. So another um, course or uh, major. So the light spectrum and human eye is part of this topic. So here are some information you need to learn from physics. What is human eye? Mesopic, photophic, you will encounter that one later on in lighting design. Wavelength. So what is wavelength? Frequency, spectrum, and transmittance. So all of this will, re will be related to lighting and you should know what are those. Okay. Next, number eight is learn sustainability. Of course, lighting designers must be ethically responsible to promote sustainability by understanding the following topics. One is efficiency. So when you do your lighting design, you know you should know at least how to make your design more efficient because we are wasting so much energy. You need to consider uh, either you want to make your lighting design amazing or more efficient. So you need to choose. Or you can have it both if you have a good lighting design. Uh, number two is energy saving because one of the main consideration for sustainability is to save energy. So one of the major consumption of our electricity today or energy is more of lighting in, in a building. So we should save energy. That is main consideration in lighting design. Of course, recycling. That is not usually part of being a lighting designer, but at least you should use free things that are recyclable. For example, um, use uh, aluminum or diecast aluminum or anything that can be recycled uh, once it is you know disposed and you need you you should not use mercury now because mercury is very poisonous um number uh, letter d is light pollution this is the major concern of our scientists in terms of looking at the stars and for those animals that are nocturnal or living in the nighttime so we should avoid the light pollution and letter is the material extraction. You should find out where are the materials in your luminaire can, uh, where it is, it has been extracted. So it's also important. It's con uh, connected to the, to the recycling topic. All right, so next, because we need to consider our environment, not just by creating amazing design, but also so consider human and the environment. And number nine is learn how to collaborate. A successful lighting designer knows how to collaborate with the following. Uh, one is other professionals like architect, MEP, the engineers, interior designer, and etc. etc. Because you cannot be alone in this kind of profession. You should collaborate with these professionals. Uh, number two is installers because uh, once you do your lighting design, you need to call them, you need to instruct them so you should be very good in commanding these installers letter c contractors because you cannot just place your luminaires there you need to coordinate with the contractors especially if your luminaire needs something like maybe a concrete pedestal or something to put a bracket and uh, yeah you need to collaborate with the con contractors of course your salesman because these people only knows how to sell. They don't consider anything but to sell. So if you want to know more about uh, light fittings or the new trends or the new market trends, you need to talk to them and uh, be friendly with the salesman. <laughs> okay, and letter E is manufacturers because these are the people who produce the luminaire. Maybe you can contribute on how to design a perfect luminaire. So yeah, you can talk to them and collaborate with them because some of the the the, the fittings or the luminaire that you will use in your design is custom made so you can talk to them and maybe ask them if they can do it or not and of course the client all right so number 10 is learn how to explain your design so this is always your end goal to explain your design with clarity and confidence so no matter how beautiful your design if you don't know how to explain 
the reasoning behind and how it is going to happen, it will be useless. So explaining your design properly will automatically come to you once you get the knowledge and experience from the first nine items. So if you're now knowledgeable for the first one to nine items that I mentioned to you, you are now become confident and you can explain your designs automatically with emotions and confidence. So let me repeat this. Try to learn the first nine and this skill will come to you automatically. All right, so good luck to you and I hope you will become an effective lighting designer soon. I hope you learned something from this article and if you want to know more, visit our YouTube channel, Udemy course and Facebook page or visit my website www.nrockalightingdesign.com.